According to most reports, we only have vague ideas about what our big-boned relatives, the Denisovans, looked like, where they lived, and why they became extinct. However, a remarkable skull discovered four decades ago near the village of Jinyushan in northeast China may belong to the enigmatic Denisovan lineage, as new evidence suggests. Dragon Man is a name given to a massive skull from Harbin City, also in northeast China, and this skull may represent a female from the same lineage. Some researchers prefer to use the term Dragon Man rather than Denisovan to refer to this group, an important topic which will be discussed at the end of the video. The Jinyushan woman from northeastern China dates to 260,000 years ago and is the largest archaic female specimen known in the ancient human fossil record. The fossil fragments at Jinyushan all belong to a single female. The skeleton's anatomical characteristics and body proportions indicate that the fossils belong to a female rather than a male. Indeed, she was a very sturdy individual, with an estimated body mass of almost 175 pounds of muscle packed on a 5 foot 5 inch frame. Her large brain size of 1,330 cubic centimeters and encephalization quotient of 4.15 is comparable to estimates for other late middle Pleistocene humans based on average body and brain size. In fact, the specimen's huge estimated cranial capacity and encephalization quotient are consistent with the rapidly growing brain capacity reported in other middle Pleistocene specimens. The Jinyushan skeleton was recovered from a collapsed limestone cave about 20 kilometers from the Yellow Sea. The cranium was originally intact but was regrettably destroyed during excavation. Uh, the first reconstruction was subsequently modified. The cranial vault and facial skeleton are severely repaired, with significant bone loss in the frontal, parietal, and occipital areas. The remaining postcranial bones are fairly well preserved. The fossil remains include one cranium, six vertebrae, two left ribs, and various hand and foot bones. The Jinyushan specimen has an estimated cranial volume of 1,330 cubic centimetres. The predicted encephalization quotient is 4.15. This is the ratio of body mass to brain size. Both follow the pattern of rapidly increasing encephalization quotient and brain size found in middle Pleistocene remains. The foramen magnum is oval, like the dragon man cranium and Neanderthals as opposed to the rounded foramen magnum in Homo sapiens. Jin Yushan was a young adult, 16 to 20 years old, according to comparisons with prehistoric Australian dentitions. While some of the teeth are heavily worn, the molar teeth show comparatively little wear, indicating a younger individual. According to anatomical rules, the Jin Yushan female's large body, wide trunk and short limbs were to be expected, as hominins at the time relied more on their physical body as a cold adaptation because their technological culture was not as advanced as later hominins. Because of their large size, the fossils were initially thought to be from a male individual. As stated, the specimen's body mass is estimated to be 78.5 kilograms, or 173 pounds, and around 165 centimeters, or 5 feet 5 inches, tall in life. Body size of humans peaked during the Middle Pleistocene, therefore the size of the specimen is not surprising, especially given its high latitude and cold climate location. The Jinyushan site is about 700 kilometers or about 450 miles south of the Dragon Man site in Harbin City and about 500 kilometers or 330 miles east of the famous Peking Man site near Beijing. Discovered in the same geological stratum were fossils of over 20 other animals, including the brown bear, the Jokudian wolf, the thick-jawed deer, and the rhinoceros. Stone tools and traces of human use of fire were also discovered, suggesting that the Yinyu Shan and Harbin hominins lived by hunting large animals and gathering vegetables and fruit. As mentioned, research has determined that Jinyu Shan woman is the largest female specimen ever discovered in the human fossil record, with body proportions typical of cold-adapted populations around the world, such as the Eskimos. Finding Pleistocene hominins of this age with related cranial and postcranial features is unusual. 
This fossil increases confidence in predicting key life history characteristics such as age and growth rates, evidence of disease, body proportions, skeletal robusticity and stature, and brain volume in relation to body size. Jin Yushan, like other Asian skulls, shows physical traits of both Homo erectus and Homo sapiens. The combination of an ancient yet large-brained cranial vault and a wide Homo sapiens-like face is noteworthy, and these features can also be found in Middle Pleistocene Chinese fossils from Dali and Harbin, but the morphology differs. As stated earlier, the Harbin cranium is also referred to as Dragon Man of Harbin and is closely aligned with the Denisovan specimens from Tibet and Russian's Altai Mountains. It is difficult to reconstruct the individual's skin tone and hair colour without genetic material, but limited genetic studies indicate that most Neanderthals, Denisovans and early Homo sapiens had brown skin, hair and eyes. According to the study, given the high latitude of the Harbin cranium's location, researchers elected to give the reconstruction only medium brown skin. Furthermore, recent study indicates that these Denisovans may have played an important role in the evolution of our own species. Now, several recent discoveries shed light on the mysteries surrounding this ancient human population and its relationships with modern humans. What happened to the Denisovans, and why they left so few archaeological remains, is an intriguing story. They may have practiced cremation, which would explain why they left so few skeletal remains. The Denisovans are even more Neanderthal than Neanderthals because of their large bones and freakish ability to withstand extreme cold and can even be considered hyper-specialized Asian Neanderthals. The Jinyushan skull is also comparable to the Dali skull, but more gracile, which can be attributed to sexual dimorphism. The specimen has thinner cranial vaults and brow ridges than the Dali specimen. Jinyushan's exterior skull is the same size as Dali's, but the bones are thinner, resulting in a higher brain capacity than the Dali specimen. Although the specimen is more gracile than the Dali specimen, this can be explained by sexual dimorphism. Both specimens have flat and broad faces, and both have similarities with the much older Jukudian and Yunxian Homo erectus specimens. The exterior of Jinyushan woman's skull is the same size as that of Dali man but the specimen has a larger brain volume due to thinner bones. In comparison to Dali, the Jinyushan brow ridges are less robust, and derived characteristics, akin to Homo sapiens, are visible in the rather delicate facial skeleton. Only a few ancient human skeletons have been recognized as female, so it is an interesting area of study. Archaic female bones, such Jinyushan, as were much more gracile than their very robust male counterparts. In terms of morphology, Archaic females are more morphologically similar to modern females than archaic males are to modern males. Because of their similar characteristics, modern females and the Jinyushan woman most likely had similar birth processes. Researchers have faced significant challenges because no DNA has been discovered in Chinese fossils because their genes did not survive the passage of time. However, Employing proteomics techniques may yield important new information. These techniques examine a fossil's proteins, which survive far longer than its DNA, and may reveal much more about the creature. Nonetheless, it is important to remember that most ancient skulls are classified based on their form, rather than their DNA. So, we should be restricted to calling a skull a Denisovan only due to a lack of DNA confirmation. Before the arrival of undeniable modern humans in Asia, some archaic fossils, such as those from Narmada, Maba, Dali, Jin Yushan, Shu Chang, and Hualongdong, exhibit a mosaic of physical traits. As a result, it is commonly accepted that these Asian hominins are crucial for understanding the later evolution of the Our genus and the creation of Homo sapiens. But the limited preservation of these fossils as well as the fact that they have mostly been documented by proponents of regional continuity, have made it difficult to incorporate them into a larger picture of human evolution. Nevertheless, a shuttle dispersal model of human evolution may be a better theory to explain the complex interaction between Eurasian and African hominins than a simple unidirectional out-of-Africa model. 
According to another study, phylogenetic analyses and Bayesian tip dating suggest that this specimen is a member of the Asian Dragon Man lineage, which includes the Denisovans and is the sister group of the Homo sapiens lineage. Both the Homo sapiens and Dragon Man lineages had deep roots extending beyond the middle Pleistocene, and the basal position of the Yonxian fossil cranium suggests it represents a population lying close to the last common ancestor of the two lineages. Further analysis, based on the limited number of informative characteristics scored for the Denisovans, suggests that they belong to the Dragon Man lineage, but their exact position in the human family tree cannot be determined. As mentioned, some researchers prefer to use the term Dragon Man Group, rather than Denisovan, to refer to this group, which is a more compelling terminology. In this family tree, the Harbin Skull and Xiahi Mandible are sister groups, and they, along with the Dali, Hualongdong, and Jinyushan specimens, comprise a monophyletic group. This clade is the sister group of the Homo sapiens. According to this best-fitting model, the ancestral distribution range of the Harbin, Dali, Jinyushan, and Hualongdong groups is most likely Asia. The evidence suggests that Denisovans of Siberia and Tibet were part of this group. However, we still lack definitive proof. And with that statement, we will leave you to ponder the mysteries of our shared human history. Until next time, stay curious and stay questioning. Also, please subscribe, share and check out our channel's other videos. Thank you and take care.